You are now watching Believe. Do you believe? I T G. You know, folks here in West Virginia, they believe in God, country, family, and mountaineer football, and not necessarily in that order. And there will be a product on the field that will match the fans that we have. Come on across the Star City Bridge and on up the hill. You're in the right place. You are in the gun. Because once you enter this family, there's no getting out. In the gun, episode 154 here of your new favorite WVU football podcast. But this is going to be a first 154 episodes in. It's time for a little ITG trivia here uh, on this uh, on this edition of the podcast. I'm Wesley Euler with the best teammates in the business. We've got the signal caller slash game show host Alex Trebek today. Uh, Jed Drenning and our uh, our buddy, our producer, our co-host, Mr. Skylar Callahan, sitting in here as well too. So, first, first, this episode of uh, ITG brought to you as always in part by our friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. How this is going to work? Jed has come up with this concept. It's ITG trivia. It's something fun here that we can do from time to time, particularly during the off season, right when we're looking for some more content and fun things to do like that. Uh, Jed is going to be the Alex Trebek. I guess that makes Skyler and I, Burt Reynolds, and somebody else from your favorite celebrity, Jeopardy, right? Uh, Jed is going to quiz Skyler and I. Skyler and I will Sorry. be against each other here. Um, there's a, a fun format that Jed has cooked up here. Uh, we're going to have a first half. We're going to have a second half. We're going to have a couple different fun things there in between. So before I turn things over to, uh, to Jed to get us going here, another thank you for presenting this episode of in the gun and just being part of our general chaos to our friends at Toothman Ford and our guy, Jr. We all know cars cost less and Grafton. I don't know. Eventually maybe we'll get Jr. on here to do some trivia with us at some point as well, like too. If, if this ends up getting picked up by the networks for a second season. All right, Jed. So this is your, uh, this the is your break. episode. That's exactly right. This pilot. is our, it's our preseason this is dry run. Pilot. This is the pilot of ITG trivia here. <laughs> Jed Trebek, what do you got for us? Well, first of all, ITG Trivia has a name. Alex Drenning? Who wants to be a mountaineer? Uh, <laughs> see what I did there? I like it. Uh, so, little history. I, because I'm a weirdo, anybody listening <laughs> knows that well no. over by now. What? Wait. Years what? ago, I started putting together WVU trivia questions. I knew that initially I was, I, I had an eye toward publishing a book, a WVU trivia book. And then it went from a book to, well, maybe an app. And then it went from maybe an app to, well, maybe I'll figure it out later. And next thing you know, here I am all these years later. So I have all these harvested and are easy to add more. Uh, so I just like, I got 37 a, pages here in this Microsoft Word document. <laughs> I might as well get Wes and Skyler to do but, something. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you how many pages are in the Microsoft Word document. Trust me. It's, it's more than 37 pages, 16. but, uh, you need to keep going way up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I told Jay, I said I'm a weirdo. All right. So come on. You know, I don't represent a weirdo. If the, if the WVU trivia file on your Microsoft Word is approaching like uh, a triple digits in the pages, I can I shudder to imagine what the Star Wars uh, file is in your Microsoft Word. That one's heading for probably six figures here soon. Okay, you said triple digits. I heard, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm moving on. Uh, here, here's here's the basic format. It's pretty easy to follow along. We hope you do. Uh, I'm actually we're, first of all we're working on the the Bill Stewart scout honor system, right? I can't see what you guys are doing. You might you might have a ringer in the room with you, looking all these things up and writing them on a piece of paper to show you. I, I have no idea. So it's the Bill Stewart scout honor system. So there's going to be a first half as you touched on, Wes. Four questions now. Starting off with easier questions, they'll work their way up a little harder, all the way to the, the fourth one being hardest. Then we'll have a second half in which the point value, like on Jeopardy, it doubles. And then after that, we will have a final question. And so I'm going to keep a, a running score as we're going through this. We're going to start off in the first half. First question is one point, then the second one's two, three, four, et cetera. Second half, they double. Second half, the first question will be two points, four, six, eight. Now, the one caveat, just to add an extra little wrinkle and maybe a touch of strategy, what will be a video a trivia game without a little strategy? 
there's a question. You don't know when it's going to come up. It's going to be question three or four, so it's a little difficult at least. In one of the two halves, you don't know which half. And I'm going to, it's called a nut check question because nut that's exactly check. what it's going to be nut doing, check. checking no. your guy. So you will tell me before the question's asked how many points you're willing to wage on it, much like a double jeopardy, except everybody's involved. Sure. So when Owen's on here with us, all three of you will be answering the same three questions. Now, what I don't want, I figured if you just answered it and told me through the screen, uh, the reason I wanted you to text me the answers instead, I don't want you to influence each yeah. other's answers, but I do want you, I do, I do want some banter. That's the fun of this. So after you text me the answer, then I want you to then give me your thoughts on the question or how you came to your answer, and then I'll tell you who was right. So I think it's pretty self-explanatory, even though I spent two minutes explaining it, right? Sounds so, good to me. And you know what, Jed? Without- like, you, you remember when you're in college or something and your buddy's like, oh, do you play rummy? And you're like, no, what's that? And they're like, ah, come on, sit down and play with us. You'll learn as, as we start yeah, playing. Yeah, You'll yeah. learn. That's just what we're going to do here. We're going to figure <laughs> it out as we go. <laughs> I was so hooked on rummy. Oh, I was so hooked on rummy. Backgammon, Danny what's Fairbanks backgammon? Got me yeah, just sit down rummy. and play with us, you know. Danny Fairbanks was a great – he was one of my high school I assistant known, coaches. I should have known you'd have And he was a grad story. assistant with me at Sanford with uh, Coach Bowden and Jimbo. But, but uh, anyway – uh, all right, so the band, the band is do, the band is played. The national anthem has been sung. The flyover, ready for kickoff, baby. It's, 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 been time for, it's time for the pilot, baby. Without further ado, here we go. Uh, who wants to be a mountaineer? All right, boys, let's go. One side of the stadium filled with sixty thousand plus is yelling, "Let's go," and the other side is yelling, "Mountaineer." We want to tell you the stuff we're not good at. Our weaknesses. So we're clear up front. Owen's cracking up. You just lost to your own game. You're outgunned and outmanned. Who wants to be a mountaineer? That's a great question. And I think your tears in your we eyes are they blow. ready. Okay. Stupid. So Stupid. Text me your answers, gentlemen. Question number one in the first half. Wait, hold on. One we, point. This isn't this isn't like a race to text you first, right? Like we could take no, a beat. Not to, at all. Okay. No. Okay. Not at just all. Just make a choice. No buzzer here. Thought, thought so. Just make a choice. Not a buzzer here. Nope, not at all. Okay. So, first question, worth one point. Quite simply, we're going to start off with the easy ones. What jersey number did Mountaineer signal caller Geno Smith wear during his record-setting career at West Virginia? I was going to toss either one of you out. If you missed, you both answered correctly. The jersey number was 12. Of course, was... he now wears number seven, as we can see. How funny is that? The first ever question. No coordination there either. No Wes coordination. Wes wearing a cheat sheet that he couldn't use. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They've got, the, they've got the 12 here, that, that, that 12 flag that they do in the Seattle. In the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, okay. So, all right. So, so far, it is one to one. All right. We're going to advance to question number two. Question number two, and this will be multiple choice. That one was two, but I didn't give you a chance. What Mountaineer kicker booted a Peach Bowl record four field goals in West Virginia's 26 to 6 drubbing of the University of Florida in 1981? Was it A, Paul Woodside, B, Charlie Bauman, C, Brad Carroll? Text me your answer, please. Good Lord. A, this, Paul this Woodside. Is, this is 15 BC Scholar. <laughs> Now I'm dating myself. I'm dating myself because to me this is a two point question. It's ten BW, ten before. Text me. Skylar texted me. Okay. Whoa, we got. Okay, so Skylar is saying B Charlie Bauman, and Wes is saying C Brad Carroll. Can I tell you this, Jed? Yes. I know Skylar's wrong. I don't know if I'm right, but I know Skylar's wrong. Well, Charlie, well, Charlie, both. Charlie, Charlie, ba- Charlie Bauman was the kicker when uh, when we went to the Fiesta Bowl and played for the national championship against Notre Dame. I know this yes, because uh, I work with his brother Randy Bauman here in Pittsburgh. He's the host of the uh, DVE morning show. Okay, so uh, cheating, See, but I knew it wasn't fair. me. I knew it wasn't. It wasn't cheating. It was just a. Okay, now, this is like Slumdog again. Millionaire. Remember in Slumdog if Millionaire, they are, thought he was cheating, but he had a different you life are a experience. Your fan, my age. I'm telling you, the name Paul Woodside is special to you. That dude was a dude. I mean, I, I remember I was 12 years old. I thought he had superpowers. 
I really did. <laughs> I mean, he was like one of the best kickers. And he was back nailing 50 yarders when people weren't doing that. So the fact that he could be relied on for such consistency and that, and that, and, and there's, there's other fans listening that are my age that are agreeing with me saying, wow, how can they not remember Paul Woods? As weird as that is to say. Yeah, I mean, no, he hey, was the kicker sense. that everybody knew. He was he was the man. But but Dang fair it. enough, I'm older than I had you, it down. So. That was like I did the 50 50 and I still got it wrong. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, that was the uh, the the victory over Charlie Pell's Florida game. I'm kicking myself over because okay. I was going to go a. <sighs> wow. So we're tied at one as we head to question three. Question number three. This is multiple choice as well. From what California Junior College did Mountaineer fan favorite Bruce Irvin transfer before his career as an electrifying WVU pass rusher? Was it A, Bakersfield College, B, now text me your answer, B, Mount San Antonio Community College, or was it C, Los Angeles Harbor College, A, oh. B, or C, Bakersfield, Mount San Antonio, or Los Angeles? Wes has texted his answer. Skyler has texted his answer. Do you guys want to discuss before I tell you the answer? Since you already sent your answers in? I honestly did not think any of them rung a bell, which is really weird. I thought it wasn't whatever the, the last one that you said C. I thought there was no way it was C. Yeah, I didn't think it was C. So either. I thought yeah. I was at 50 50. You know, watch it is C, isn't it? The way you're laughing. <laughs> no, no, no. If you, you you both guessed B. And you both are correct. Oh, okay. It is Mount San Antonio Community College. So the reason I the well reason done. I thought it was that one, because I remember back when he transferred to WVU that the name of his school, I remember that the name of his school made it sound like it was in a different part of the country. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you'd hear that. The average oh, person yeah, might yeah, hear yeah. that and be like, yeah. oh, it's in Texas. Yeah. The only the That's only reason fair. I got the B is because I knew it had multiple names. And I well, knew you it both, wasn't C. You both hey. had, a, had a plan that got you there. You don't, you I don't, mean, what, what do all, what do all coaches say? You don't apologize for a victory, right? <laughs> well, what you both said made sense. You, you, you got to the right answer. So okay. yeah, all right. he not played bad. Not bad. for the, for the Mount San Antonio college Mounties in Walnut, California. The Mount, so, I, remember the, I remember the Mounties. The Mounties. I remember the Mounties connection now that you mentioned. So we that. are tied at three as we come down the stretch winding down the first half of play for question number four which is worth four points now what's question number four worth four points mean it means the question's harder multiple choice still now are you ready what wvu wide receiver recruited to play basketball for the mountaineers snared a fourth quarter dan kendra pass off a deflection and raced 50 yards for the deciding score in a 13 to 10 Peach Bowl victory over North Carolina State in 1975, just when West Virginia fans everywhere thought the Mountaineers had bought the farm. This was Bobby Bowden's last game. So what receiver caught the deflected pass for the 50 yard touchdown on the 13 to 10 win over NC State in the Peach Bowl? Was it A, Marshall Mills? Was it B, Dave Jaggedman? Was it C, Steve Lewis? Or was it D, Scott McDonald? Mills, Jaggedman, Lewis, or McDonald? Please text your answer. I honestly have no idea. This is as big of a guess as any. Okay. Yeah, on the on the discuss? last on the last two, I could at least eliminate a couple of the multiple choice. Like I knew it wasn't Charlie Bauman on the first one. You could have put in a long snapper in this one, and I probably would have picked the long snapper. <laughs> one of these one of these names could be completely random. I'm not dismissing that fact. So you're both guessing. I've seen like oh, I can yeah. see I can oh, yeah. see the highlight that you're talking about in my mind, but like I've I've gotten yeah. I've gotten I've gotten no clue. I've gotten no clue. Now that one's before me. I mean, that's just because I'm a nerd that reads about WVU history all the time is why I know that. But it's it's before I was too young to remember that. But uh, uh, so anyway, uh, you both kind of guessed, but had reasons for doing so. The correct answer 
was D, Scott McDonald. And Wes got it right. Scholar, you missed it. Uh, Scholar guessed C, Steve Lewis. What, he was a couple snapper, interesting right? points here. Couple, they were all receivers. Okay. A couple Brand interesting Brian. points here. One of the defenders chasing McDonald on the play. And by the way, McDonald racked up 288 career rebounds on the hardwood at WVU in addition to this. Ooh. But one of the defenders chasing him was a young NC State linebacker named Bill Cower on the play. <laughs> That's insane. That's it. That is incredible. Notice, if you notice, if you were listening closely, words matter. I kind of, sort of, I don't often do this, I kind of, sort of tried to help you out. What was the answer? D. Scott McDonald. And the question ended with, over North Carolina State, when West Virginia fans everywhere thought the Mountaineers had bought the farm. Uh, Scott you see, you see, McDonald. You see, you, see what he, you see what he's doing? You see what he's uh, doing uh, there, uh, 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 uh. You slide so, on. Wes, do you want to take us to a break, and we'll come back for the second well, half? Well, I mean, since I'm leading here at halftime, I, mean, I guess I might as well take us into break. Uh, before I do, a thank you to our friends at Fortis. Uh, for root performance and financial security guaranteed, make sure you visit Fortis.us.com. Maybe we'll have to see if Rick Lewis wants to jump in on one of these trivia episodes at some point here in the ha- and the uh, in the off season. But listen, that's thirty minutes in the books here, all right. But there's still thirty minutes to play. Back we to the all, drawing board. Listen, we all know, all right. Championships aren't won in the first half, so still plenty of opportunity for Skyler to get into this thing. We wait the second half, the final question. We're still waiting for our nut check question here. <laughs> as well too so we're going to take a break we're going to let the band play at halftime here they've got a lovely rendition of the indiana jones theme song coming up for you and we'll be back after this you are in the gun itg will return after these messages three throws sideline got it jaheem white with 23 seconds to go and west virginia takes the lead Nobody supports the Blue and Gold Mountaineers like Toothman Ford. With over 20 NIL deals and counting, Toothman Ford continues to rally behind our student athletes. And it's time we rally and support the dealer that supports the Mountaineers. Not only does Toothman Ford offer the best prices in the state on pre-owned, their never-over MSRP campaign on new Fords guaranteed to save you thousands. Drive with pride all season long, knowing you're supporting the dealer that fuels our Mountaineers. Toothman Ford, where cars cost less. In Grafton and at ToothmanFord.com. For more West Virginia Mountaineer football content, be sure to follow us on Twitter at In the Gun Podcast. For nearly 20 years, Fortis has been the nation's leader in providing guaranteed roof performance programs for commercial buildings. Fortis offers roof performance solutions that feature extensive initial and ongoing reconditioning for commercial buildings as an alternative to traditional replacement with long-term performance guarantees that are backed by global leader Lloyds of London. Fortis offers a comprehensive range of roof performance management programs that provide financial security, extend the life of our customers' roofs, and make a significant impact on ROI. Fortis is currently improving performance and increasing ROI for customers at more than 4,800 locations, with more than 140 million square feet protected, including many Fortune 500 companies that have turned to Fortis to save money, gain financial certainty, and extend the life of their existing roofs. Fortis has helped customers save more than $520 million in capital roof replacement costs for an average ROI of over 250%. To learn more, visit fortis.us.com. Fortis, roof performance and financial certainty guaranteed. All right, back in the gun here, back on the field of play here in our pilot episode of ITG Trivia of Who Wants to Be a Mountaineer, as Jed Trebek has uh, dubbed it here. Uh, Jed, I've got a lead here at the half, right? Uh, Give us the – I'm trying to think, because each point was one, two, three, four, right? So that means that means that – oh, wait, I'm really bad at math. That means Skyler has four. And I have eight, correct? You have seven. You got one, two, and four. You have seven. That's right. That's right. That's yep. right. I've got seven, and Skyler has First question two, three. Right, right. And that Skyler got one. Skyler got one and three. Three. Okay, that's right. Yep. So it's yeah. seven yeah, to eight. four. I've got a seven to four advantage. Right. You Is got right? a seven to three advantage. Seven to three. Seven to three. Seven to three. Seven to three. Clearly, math yeah, is not my strong point. It's the kind of score that uh, a certain Virginia Tech coach might throw both hands in the air in celebration, <laughs> right? Actually, that was zero zero. But 
<laughs> oh, Jed, before the, uh, before the second, hold on real quick, before the second half uh, tips off, a uh, another thank you to our friends at Johnston Equipment. Uh, make sure you're checking out, visiting their new location, Route 33, right out, uh, right outside of Weston. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through the four questions of the second half. And Wes, I say we take one quick break before our version of Final Jeopardy, which is the final question. Because I will okay. give you guys, I'll tell you how it's going to work. You'll wager after you hear the topic of the question. But anyway, we have four questions. Now, again, they're all escalating as they go in difficulty. Now, sometimes you might find the questions in general in the second half are a little tougher than the first half. Not always, but some of them can be. So in other words... The second half question two might be a little tougher than the first half question two. Makes sense. So here we go in the second half with Wes leading seven to three. Question number one to start the second half for two points. From which Pennsylvania school did Jeff Hostetler transfer before winning the debut starting quarterback job in 1982? Was it A, Pitt, B, Temple, or C, Penn State? Oh, I texted you the answer before you even finished yeah, reading the question. I didn't, know, I didn't know. I didn't know there was multiple yeah, choice did. here. That's no, a, you're, that, good. you're good. You're good. You both got it. That's two points for each of you. So that nine brings our score. Dolly Parton. To nine to five. Have you ever yeah, googled what a to make nittany a lion is? A nittany lion. You know, I, that's a good question. What is it? It's. Is it from a fake what lion I remember, like a it's, it's, it's not even real. It's not like a real thing. It's like just a lion and. Because it's they... someone who wanders central Pennsylvania yeah. telling you how good the creamery is and asking <laughs> what happened to the Joe Paterno statue. I had it. I had it pulled up actually literally like two weeks ago. Well, they will have a bearing later in this half. So if you want to learn what it is, okay, that's fine. Uh, but those nitty lines are coming back up. Okay. Hint, hint, teaser, teaser. Okay. Oh, huh. Are you, are you distracted? Scholar? Scholar's distracted. He's, no. He's, he's standing at his podium and it. Text. <laughs> I got it. I was right like, here. Steve, Steve Owen would not be very happy with me right now. Crikey. Uh, know, know. What line it's like was. a bear cat. It's a fake. Well, now I'm going to get people from Grafton call me. A bear cat's not fake. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They, even on their actual site, it says the history of the name Nittany is a little unclear. Many say it, is, it comes from a Native American word meaning single mountain. <laughs> so they don't even know what they are. Well, they do okay. know that they don't have Jeff Hostetler, two-time Super Bowl champion. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, with the score, Wes 9, Skyler 5, we go to question number two in the second half. Worth four points, multiple choice. Which one of the following was not a sign held by a fan during ESPN's College Game Day broadcast from Morgantown prior to West Virginia's 2011 showdown with LSU. Which one was not a sign held by a fan? Was it A, Let's Go Mountaineers, spelled G-E-A-U-X? Was it B, Save a Couch, Burn a Tiger? Or was it C, Is This the Line for Hannah Montana Tickets? Please text me your answer. Let's go, Mountaineers, save a couch, burn a tiger, or is this the line for Hannah Montana tickets? Oh, I'm kind of back and forth, but I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with uh, A there. Final answer? You want – up to you. Yep. Okay. It's the same final Probably answer I any had. Any thoughts on that? Same final answer I had. My logic was that number C is so random it has to be true. Right. That's that's uh, exactly my thinking. And then my next thought was, no way in hell a WVU student's making a sign that says "Let's go Mountaineers" <laughs> in the LSU. Maybe like "Go home" or something like that. But we ain't we ain't we ain't slapping hands with them like that. It's A. Okay. Uh, so you both guessed A. Let's go. The Cajun spelling of "go," Mountaineers. That is incorrect. Oh, wow. That was a sign. So was Save a Couch, Burn a Tiger. Oh, the out, it was the, the obvious. I tricked you. It was oh. the obvious. There was no, is this the line for the Hannah Montana tickets? There was not that sign. So you both got zero. So the score remains nine Look to five. Us. Look at us. Dolly Parton's proud, though, once again here. <laughs> Okay, so down the stretch they come. 
to question number three. Is this the nut check? I mean, we're running out of room for the nut check here. Well, question the nut check will always be question three or four in one of the two halves. This is worth six points. And wait, wait. You know what, Wes? Looky here. This is the nut check. Nut check. Nut check nut means exactly nut what check. you would think. So, here we go. You get to wager whatever you want on this question, but you have to wager before you hear it. So, the score is nine to five right now. Oh, gosh. What would you like to wager? Is this multiple choice? Yes. Wait, do we have to text you what we're wagering, or are we just going to say it here out loud? Oh, you can you can say it. There's no secret to that. Yeah, but there might be some strategy behind it. Okay, text it. Good, good call. Text it. I like that. I know this is bad. This is bad, bad, bad. But I'm doing it. Ooh, look at that. Skyler making it a true nut check. Nut check. He's taking all five points in Vietnam. Wes That's being strategic, which makes sense with a nine to five lead. So Wes is betting three. Skyler's betting five. Wes currently leads nine to five. Here we go with the question. The largest, six points, the largest crowd West Virginia has ever played in front of was in the 2023 season opener at Penn State. What was the official attendance that night in Happy Valley, PA? Oh. Here are the four numbers. You might even want to write them down, I don't, whatever you want to do, because they're all going to sound similar. We remember we, we all bet on this we before the this game seemed to come the closest, and we were all pretty close. A, was it 107,253? B, was it 110,855? C, was it 110,747? Or D, was it 110,102? A lot of points on the line. Think about it for a second. Text me your answer. Thoughts before I give you the answer? I I thought it may have been C because 747 sounded very, very familiar. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I thought that it was under 110. So that's that's where I went with that one. So you went with A. Yes. I went with A. See, it's funny. I thought A was the one that sounded too low. I thought we hit that 110 number, but barely. So I went with D. Yes. Wes went with D. Scholar went with A. The correct answer was C. 110,747. <laughs> 110,000. So, Wes, you're docked three. Scholar, you're down to a goose egg. So we are looking at a six, six to zero, but you're not out of it. We got a four point question. We got an eight point question upcoming and the final Mountaineer question. So it is six to nothing, Wes, as we come down the stretch. Oh, gosh. Here comes the eight point question. Multiple choice. <clears throat> okay. Six nothing, Wes. This is worth eight points. We'll ask this question. Take a quick break and come back with the final question. Here we go. When West Virginia's Tavon Austin ran for a school record 344 yards against Oklahoma in 2012, how many of those yards did ESPN Stats and Info estimate came after contact? He ran for 344. How many came after contact? Multiple choice. Was it A, 22 yards, B, 44 yards, C, 66 yards, or D, 99 yards? How many came after contact according to ESPN stats and info? He ran for 344 school record. How many were after con contact? This is this feels like a trick question in some ways. 
It's the same thought process. I, because you know why, Skylar, right? When you yeah. when you visualize those highlights, it's all Tavon running through acres That's... with nobody around him. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, so it's all him juking it. Like I don't remember him stiff arming anybody to hell. Most of it was everyone chasing yards. it. Right. So okay, so here we go. Skyler says A twenty two yards. Wes says B forty four yards. It is A twenty two yards. Let's go. Look at that. Skyler jumps in the lead. Let's oh, go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, wow. Man. Now, now, think about that. What that means is Tavon had more than 320 yards before the Sooners' defense touched him. Yes. That's insane. So, with Skyler now suddenly in a in the lead at 8-6, to six, his first lead of the night, we are going to go to a quick break, and we're going to come back. Here's the topic so you guys can think about it and text me what you want to bet. The topic is... Big game scores, sort of. Mm. Big game scores, sort of. I so, I Wes, think you want to take us into a break, down. and we'll come back with the final Mountaineer question. Oh, geez, Louise. I'm going to do my best not to blow this thing in the last minute here when we return on the other side. I have a feeling Jed has a couple tricks, not just one up his sleeve as well, too. Before we get out of here, we'll close this thing down. Episode one of who wants to be a mountaineer when we return on the other side, you are in the gun. If you work the land, you just got to be a jack of all trades type. There's just too much to do. So if you got to be a welder or a farmer or a ditch digger, that's just who you are that day. And tomorrow you can be somebody else. Get your coyote at the new location of Johnston Equipment between Weston and Buckhannon. All right, here we go. Regis Philbin, Alex Trebek, Jed Drenning. The drama is building. Skyler with a, uh, I mean, I had a six to nothing advantage. Nut check time. Skyler, uh, well, I guess not even, I mean, it was nut check time, but it wasn't a nut check question. You get what I'm saying there? Both missed the nut check. And, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good example here. I'm glad I'm on this side. It's like it's like one of, answer. It's like where you see one of those games, right? Where like Michigan State led for one second, and it was the last one second of the game when they hit a three pointer to finally take the lead for the first time. I just blocked. That's what I feel I'm like. App State, and I just blocked the field goal. Against we're Michigan. gonna get comments. We're gonna get comments in the uh, on the YouTube uh, in the comment section saying that the uh, this is rigged. You guys just scripted this. <laughs> Now, you can I swear we did not. My pride, my pride, right? Listen, this is not the WWE. My pride would not let me script a loss. Okay, that ain't that ain't happening. All right, <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> All right, Jed, it ain't over. Well, not till the fat lady sings. It ain't over until so, the dorky guy gives the final question. <laughs> so Skyler, with Skyler in the lead, after eight questions, after two halves of who wants to be a mountaineer. Down the stretch, we come to the final landing spot with the final question. Skylar's up eight to six. The topic, as I told you before the break, for this final question, big game scores, sort of. Here's the question. This is not multiple choice. You simply guess. You text me your guess. I structure the question so you can at least make a puncher's guess. Puncher's chance, Have a puncher's chance at a guess, I should say. Here we go. West Virginia's. 46 to 44 comeback win in triple overtime over Louisville in 2005 is regarded as one of the greatest games in program history. WVU trailed by what score at halftime? Oh, damn. Do, 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 do. Now, when you're ready, text me your answers, please. You said the score, right? Not the deficit. The score at halftime. Score at halftime. I need oh, a score. God. This is this is a shot in the dark. Yeah. Oh God. See, 
I like how the difference in strategies here too. Like I have been texting Jed my answers like before he finishes the question because I don't want to second guess myself. Skyler's really taking time to think about this. I like that it's good conflicting strategies. They here. are. I like this. They're very divergent strategies here. Uh, okay, I got both your answers. So the question is, what was the score at halftime? I mean, there are various scores in the second half. We all remember twenty-four to seven stands out, right? That's one that jumps out because that's really when the comeback started. Well, I'm uh, wrong. But some people would say it started a little earlier. Skyler guessed 17 to 6 at halftime. West guessed 17 to 7 at halftime. Mm. He scored halftime was 17 to nothing, Louisville. Ah. So that I knew, I knew West, Louisville had 17. I, I just couldn't. Ah. Wes wagered all six points. He's down to zero. Skyler wagered two points. He's down to six. And he is our champion of our preseason wow. dry run six, episode. Six of nothing. A real, a real barn burner. And there. Frank Beamer throws up both. <laughs> I mean, geez, that was like the greatest show on turf against the uh, Walsh's Niners. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Seven, I, I have wonder, no wonder, idea. We're going to have to ask Owen. That was, was Bill no Walsh. That was, that was Bill Walsh's Niners against the greatest show on Turf Boys. I mean, that was a track meet. I have no idea why nothing. why I had six in my mind. I knew I had a really good feeling about 17. And I knew it was either three or six. Or Same. I thought it was three. I, or six. I knew for some reason I knew it was Louisville 17 yeah. and a half. I was at that game, so maybe I just remembered that. You know what's funny? I asked a buddy of mine this question today. He said 17 to 7. So, I, I thought I had. It. I thought I had it. When, when you when you gave Sky when you gave Skyler that he guessed seventeen to six, I thought I had it. I was like, oh, we're about to. We did a flip. <laughs> and we're about to do another flip. We're gonna, we're, gonna flip we're gonna have to ask Owen if he remembers. Yeah. That. Ooh, probably. Which not. we need to get him on here for the next one. Just real quick, Jed. I don't know if I've told this story on the. It's not even really a story. It's like a funny anecdote on the podcast before. I might have, but if not, this would be the time to do it. Uh, that game, right? You referenced the the famous comeback, and everyone remembers, you know, twenty four to seven. Of course, that was the day of passbacks. Still, right, where you could get a pass back, you could leave the game at halftime to go out to your car, and you could come back in with your pass. Right, good old days. I will never forget. Two of my uncles left at halftime to go back to the blue lot and drink, and you know, whatever. Like this is it. We're done. This game, you know, we, you know, whatever. I will, or maybe it was like to their credit, maybe it was like mid third quarter when they went back. Maybe it wasn't quite halftime yet. I will never forget overtime starts and my two uncles and we had pretty good. These were like my grandparents seats. So we were like, like 15 rows back at like the 40 yard line. We had pretty good seats. I will never forget my mom like elbows me and she goes, look, 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 look. And it's my two uncles who were like in their forties at the time, like sprinting back down the stairs, like a bunch of little kids to be like a beer in each hand. Just everybody sprinting down the <laughs> stairs to get back for overtime. And my uncle's being right at the forefront, like, Holy crap, what happened? <laughs> and that is another one of those of things from college football 1.0 that we will never get again, but I will remember that's, that's fondly right. in my, in my heart. <laughs> Well, but I will never forget that image of of hundreds, if not thousands, of people pouring back into the stadium, and my mom being like, "Look, there's your two dummy uncles. Look, eh, look," and they're like, oh, trying I remember to remember sitting down up to top seat. of the that game. I sat up top of the Louisville section because I kind of had this pass to get in and sit where you know, hey, go where there's a good seat. Or me and my buddy decided because this was when I was doing pregame, but I wasn't doing game, so I sat up literally in the top row of the visitor section in a sea of red. And when we recovered an onside kick, I looked back over the corner on the visitor side. I'm looking up Valley View Avenue, and it was just hundreds and hundreds of people tripping and sprinting and climbing the hill with their hands and their oh, it was it was insane, fighting to get it back awesome. in, just racing. Yeah. It was I awesome. Was, I was little for that game, but I can't remember. Was that one or the Louisville or the the Rutgers overtime game? Was that a midweek game? One of them was a midweek game, right? It was like a Thursday nighter. Rutgers might have. Rutgers was the Jarrett Brown game. Yeah, I think that was a Saturday yeah. too. Uh, well, are you thinking, are you thinking of the Thursday, the Louisville, like the Pat White Gold Rush run at the end? Maybe that yeah, was a Thursday. Run. That's that's a Thursday. If you, were, I thought one of the know. the overtimes with either Louisville or Rutgers was a Thursday night, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. I could be wrong too. I but I, so. I Louisville I was, so was definitely a, I Louisville remember. was definitely a Saturday because that was a day game. 
Um, Rutgers yeah, yeah, might have yeah. been, but I still think it was a Saturday. But that's a good question. We'll have to look that Rutgers up for the next Pat, edition. Of- we'll have to ask Owen his thoughts on that, that Rutgers game. I remember Pat was a scratch, and Jared came injured, in, right? you know? Yeah. Yeah. Here, let's see right here. I mean, Jared started December that Rutgers- 2nd, 2006. All right, so look up on a calendar. What day of the week was December – Thir- uh, December 2nd, 2006. Saturday. It was a Saturday? Okay, there you go. There you I go. I thought that. Well, there you go. There's a final bonus piece of trivia for oh, you. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Skyler, you missed that. That question was worth six points. It was actually a Saturday and not a Thursday. <laughs> So you're back down to a Frank Beamer zero zero tie. My Zoom won't do it. <laughs> Wes has only got the special sauce. Yeah, he's the only the, one. They gave me the walking Phoenix powers. <laughs> we can put thumbs everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's been uh, doing life. Wes, well, you know where I'm from, right? Like, you know. Yeah, I know where you're from. <laughs> but, you know. Oh, sorry. You mean the? Well, no. Listen, if we can't do this, I'm from the we, Panhandle. If, if they can do this, we can. Remember Dana. If they can do this, we can yeah. do this. Oh, this was fun. Let the record forever show the inaugural champion of Who Wants to Be a Mountaineer trivia, Skylar Callahan. I took the loss, but you know what they say: it ain't about who laughs first; it's about who laughs last. All right, yeah, we're we gonna get some more here. of these. Yeah. We're gonna start a tournament of champions, kind of. I love it. This Keep was a cool running. Yeah. We'll have to bring in special guests to do this and everything from from yes. time to time. Good idea by Jed well, here. Philip Bone that inspired we'll... me. That's what that's what I mean. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Big shout out to our guy Philip Bone as well too. Uh, that's the thing. We'll continue. I'll, I'll plug that real quick before we get out of here. We'll continue this um, off season. We have some more guests lined up for the rest of the off season, but we've had some great ones so far. Uh, all back through our, you know, if you just go back through the previous episodes, not far here. Uh, behind us we got the pat white and steve slayton episode our buddy philip bowen charles wesley godwin uh drew fabianich um tell me uh the the, uh uh uh, ray and zach frazier uh the uh the guy who played defensive back for nick saban i'm drawing a blank right now orlando Bo Orlando as well, too, on yeah. with us. So we've had some great offseason guests, uh, and those interviews are kind of evergreen. You know, they're just us catching up with those guys, what they have going on in life, their thoughts on favorite WVU memories and things like that. So make sure you're checking out all of those here as we roll along through the offseason as well. That'll do it for this edition of ITG and the first edition of Who Wants to Be a Mountaineer. Good stuff by Jed, Alex, Trebek, Regis, Which Philbin. one of you guys? Bob Barker. Which one of you guys training. is who's Sean Connery? I, I already said that was Burt Reynolds, so I guess I guess okay. that makes Scott. I don't know who Burt okay. Reynolds is, but I don't know who the other guy is. You don't know Sean Connery, before James we, Bond? But just before just just Skyler, before we get out of here, just look at Jed dead in the eyes and say, Suck it, Drenning. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Wes is Turd Ferguson. Remember? Well, that's, a, that's right, it's a funny name. It's a funny name. All right. Yeah, Let's see what name. you wagered. Suck it, Drenning. All right, that's it. We're going to get into some more inappropriate <laughs> jokes here. This is going to continue to diverge. It's, it's tough. Evolve. It's tough to beat Norm Mac- Norm McDonald is tough to beat. Rest we are going to have to. We're going to have to send our our younger buddy Skyler some uh, some some Jeopardy clips from Saturday Night yeah, Live here absolutely. as soon as as soon as we close this thing down. But that will do it for this edition of ITG and Who Wants to Be a Mountaineer for Skyler Callahan, the co-host slash producer and the signal caller slash game show host Jed Drenning. I am Wesley Euler. The one thing we ask of you as always before we get out of here is to be an ear and tell an ear about your new favorite WVU football podcast. Take care everybody and we'll talk to you soon. You've been in the gun.